So the topic today is the applications of the business analytics and artificial intelligence in the industry. So uh, my introduction is already been given, so I shall not spend any time here. Uh, these are some of my clients across the globe. Uh, let me come straight to the topic. Uh, that's what I'm going to cover today. In the customer analytics, I'm going to cover the customer retention analytics and customer acquisition analytics on a high level. And uh, within that, I'm going to cover the churn analytics, customer lifetime value, and the promotion response modeling. In the customer acquisition analytics, we'll do the segmentation, recommendation engine, and purchase likelihood. In the financial analytics, we'll cover the credit risk modeling for the pre-loan and the post-loan disbursement. And in the fraud analytics, we'll cover the only one part that is the application fraud. And within that, I shall discuss that how robotic process automation and computer vision or image analytics get uh, delivered is there. So let's start with the customer analytics first. And uh, in between, if you have any question, uh, uh, I think better, uh, better you park your questions uh, for the end of this session, maybe after half an hour, uh, the last two, 10 minutes, you can ask me the questions. So uh, first thing is that why should that matter? Why should one be interested about the retention analytics? You must be all knowing, you must have all been taught that, you know, uh, getting a new customer costs a bomb. So it is always good to retain your old customers and it makes very easy to sell to the new products and services to your existing customers. Now, the beauty of this, you know, modeling framework is that uh, uh, typically what's been taught in the B schools or any of the college in the academia for that matter is that uh, for segmentation, you do uh, cluster analysis for a particular say, practice like you do this actually. It doesn't happen like that. So whenever you go to the industry, a business problem has been given. You have not been given just to do a kind of segmentation exercise. So whenever a business problem has been given, you have to attack the problem by creating a kind of analytics framework. Now, please understand from this diagram, what do I mean by analytics framework? So for example, you have been given that I want to, or the business wants to retain the customers. So the first thing is that predict the churn risk and time that everybody does. But do you think that all the customers who have got a high flight risk, of course, you can find out the customers who have got, uh, who are highly, uh, the probability is very high that they will leave the organization that you can find from here. But do you think it is good to target all those customers? Answer is definitely no. Reason being that all the customers with the high flight risk might not, might not have the high CLTV. That means the customer lifetime value. So it is always good to target those customers whose uh, flight risk is high and who has got the high customer lifetime value. So from the step two, if you can predict the customer lifetime value on the top of predicting the charm risk and time, so you can get the customers who have got the high flight risk and high customer lifetime value. The third step again comes that, is that sufficient to spend your marketing budget or marketing dollars to those customers who have got a uh, high, predict, uh, high uh, risk of charm and high CLTV? Answer is no. Reason being that all such customers might not come back to you if they don't have any intention to respond to your promotions. So your marketing budget would be wasted. So the third part that we come here is that predicting the, uh, predicting the propensity of churn risk, uh, predicting the propensity of response to the promotions. So finally, you get a kind of customer list where the predicting the churn risk and type, predicting CLTP and predicting the propensity response to customers, promotions are there. So precise list of target customers you get where the high flight risk is there, high CLTP is there, and high to moderate probability of response to promotions are there. I hope this framework is clear. These, are, these, are, these frameworks are very fundamental uh, before attacking any problem. Uh, without the framework, if you just plug and play one model, that won't solve any real business problem. Now coming to a business problem, say the chart analytics, the first part. So out of this, you know, step one, step two, step three. If we just look at the first step, chart analytics, you can see again that this one business problem can be attacked through multiple approaches. And each of the approaches can be attacked or can be solved through number of modeling techniques. So again, it is not, as I always mentioned from the beginning, it is not like plug and play of one model for one problem and it is done. Uh, it doesn't happen like that. So what is the first approach of chart analytics is that chart not profile in the non chart database. So if you can do a kind of lookalike modeling, figuring out that whether any kind of chart not profile exists in the non chart database or not, uh, that you can do, of course, by K-nearest neighbor or any of the lookalike algorithms. So that's approach number one. Approach number two is the kind of charm scoring, figuring out what is the probability of the charm score. And the approach number, the third approach is the creating the charm time that you can do by survival analysis, deep learning solutions. Way. So if you know about survival analysis, we have got besides the probability of customer left or not left, we also take the duration part as the months. And then we have got two dependent variables there. The only, only other than MANOVA, there is only a statistical or machine learning technique where I have got more than one dependent variable so that you can predict not only the probability of the churn, but also when the customer is going to leave. 
so precisely you can tell that this customer is going to leave uh, after this many months with this amount of probability so this is the kind of example of uh, k nearest neighbor how that uh, works for the lookalike modeling uh, we just figured out the distance and from the distance matrix we can predict that yes this particular customer is the probability is very high for him or her to live and then we have got the charge coding algorithms which we do it by uh, different kind of uh, classification techniques precisely uh, reason being that i have got two classes here uh, the customers who are with me and the customers who have left these are the two classes and number of techniques that have been leveraged that's very important again uh, not one single technique and then we compare across the models through several model comparison techniques i shall walk you through few of them if time permits and then uh, uh, that's how the model gets compared validated and uh, we take it forward from there and uh, survival is briefly discussed how it works and uh, the, this is how the survival analysis works in the sense that if it is kind of parametric model, we use the Weibull function or the exponential function. If it is semi parametric, we use the Cox regression. And if it is non parametric, we use the Kaplan Meyer. These are the different kind of uh, deep learning solutions. So, it's deep learning techniques, as you must be knowing, are primarily used for the artificial intelligence parts. That means for the computer vision, image analytics, or the speech mining. Uh, but besides the besides the artificial intelligence or the image analytics part, these are also been used for the traditional techniques, traditional problems like marketing analytics. So uh, it is not it's the myth that deep learning techniques are only for the image analytics or the speech mining. They are very much been used uh, for the for the traditional problems. And of course, why do we use it? Not for the sake of or the, not for the fancy of doing it, but because the modeling accuracy increases multifold by the by the sheer sophistication of the techniques. Then comes the next part is about the customer lifetime value uh, prediction. Again, uh, again, uh, as I always say that don't uh, don't allow just one technique to use it. Number one, number two, always think or always figure out about the advanced techniques. So typically, customer lifetime value one can look at the time series or those things like what was the customer's past pain and develop a kind of projection from the time series. But those are kind of you know uh, only honestly they are obsolete. Nobody uses uh, those things in these days. So typically, these are the deep learning techniques like long short term memory. Again, I am not just plugging one long short term memory here. Uh, you can see here multiple long short term memories are being stacked. So a series of models are being stacked, and from there we develop the output. And finally comes that which customer decisions can be prevented. So that's why we use the promotions response modeling. We look at what kind of uh, what kind of channels customers use, what kind of conversions customers have done at first, and through which we just uh, predict that yes, the customers are likely to respond to your promotions. And finally, we give the clients a kind of clear dashboards with a chart probability, net promoter score, customer lifetime value, and next best offer. So that's precisely the uh, the first part of customer retention analysis. Then we move to the customer acquisition analytics. In here, we will cover customer segmentation and profiling, purchase likelihood, and recommendation engine. Now, how does that occur? How does that take place uh, in a sequence? Is that uh, first of all, you need to create the homogeneous groups of customers. That is pretty well known to you all. You will have done. The second part is that recommendation engine. Like you have done the segmentation for what purpose? You are doing it so that the marketing gets customized. Marketing means what? You have to sell some product. But the question is which product? Because a company has got multiple products, multiple variants of the products. So the right product needs to be sold to the right customer. That's the beauty of marketing, right? That's the essence rather of marketing. So, but how will you know that what is the right product? Recommendation engine will precisely tell you this is the right product uh, for any customer. And that helps you not only selling, not only for the first time selling, but for the cross selling and upselling as well. And finally, you get the purchase likelihood in the sense it is not only about recommending which particular product to be sold, but also what is the probability of particular product to get sold. So it precisely tell that Mr. X is going to purchase a product A with probability of 0.8 by the third month or fourth month precise so that's the essence of this framework so again i'm you know hitting hard on this one point which perhaps you know you might not which will give you a kind of food for thought is about the developing the framework uh, from for before before jumping into any modeling uh, exercise so typically algorithms which we do is the cluster analysis and rfm analysis which is mostly known to you so i shall give you a very live example of, uh, uh, of a bank where i worked uh, for a brief period uh, in Southeast Asia, and uh, this is what uh, the kind of variables we got, and we are supposed to develop a uh, develop a cluster analysis for the segmentation. 
So finally, this is the kind of dashboard we came across. So these are the three macro segments, and the first macro segment has got three micro segments. The second macro segment has got two micro segments, and the third one is the homogeneous segment. Now, uh, these names that we have given is actually after doing a lot of exercise on the on the profiling part. We have done a lot of profiling here. Uh, profiling, what does that mean? It means that whenever we actually segregate these uh, these uh, segments into the different variables, how do they score? We can come across about how their profile look like. Like say, as you can see, the aspire segment is home to the youngest customers with the lowest income. Now you look here, the aspire, their income you can see and their age you can see. But their, their finances are very active in the sense that they take far, uh, tough financial decisions with the high interest rate. Now interest rate you can see here. In this country, uh, it is not very common in India to pay this much of interest rate, but the country where I work, it is very common to pay this much. And you can see here, these customers, these young customers who have got a low income, but they are paying, they are paying this much of interest rate. So perhaps they're all they are purchasing the iPhones or all the, all the electronic gadgets, which are otherwise costly, but have a kind of fad in the market. So uh, they, they purchase those things by taking some uh, substantial loans. So I'm not again going you through the entire dashboards in the interest of time, but that's how the profiling gets done precisely. Uh, now the now the next question came from the CEO. Once we have completed this uh, segment exercise, is that uh, how can you segment a new customers? So uh, why why this question is critical? Because for the existing customers, you have got the transactional variables, right? But for the new customers, you don't have transactional variables. You have only got the demographic variables, which come from the KYC forms. So what we did is that whatever you know these segments we got like three plus two plus one. Okay, all these all these micro segments uh, become become the dependent variable of a decision tree. So this becomes the dependent variable of decision tree, and only the only the demographic variables become the independent variables. So we can clearly come out with the rules like if uh, the income is between two million to five point one million and the age is between twenty seven to thirty one, then with the point eight probability, I can say that the customer is going to be disparate. Now again, why is that important? Why should we do that thing? Reason being that even for a new customer when he comes, when he or she comes, it's important to customize the marketing. So that's the reason we should do the kind of uh, decision tree or a kind of segmenting the new customers, even if they are new. I hope I'm clear. Of course, if there are any questions, I'm glad to take that after the session. Okay, next, come, next part of this is the recommendation engine. I told you that uh, once the segmentation is done, it's very important to recommend that which particular uh, products needs to be marketed to which customers. So from this uh, from this fig uh, figure only, it's very clear to you what does a content-based recommendation does. Say for example, you purchased one kind of beer or a own kind of Coke, and then the similar kind of products can be recommended to you. That's the content-based. Say for example, recommended movies with actors, with same actors, for example, or recommended other sites with similar content. So that's how the examples of the applications go here. Then comes the collaborative filtering is that uh, it's very simple that if two profiles are similar, two customers are similar. And then if these customers have purchased say the pizza or some salad and some beer or Coke. So if this customer has purchased only pizza and salad, then the beer or Coke can be recommended. So uh, that's, the, that's the collaborative filtering part. Now, uh, now you can understand, I'm sure if you are, you are thinking while you are listening, you're also thinking, uh, this part cannot be done if, if you don't do the segmentation. Now, are you understanding uh, why I'm, I'm hammering on the, seg uh, the framework part? Reason being that whether they are similar or not, this can only be understood if you are doing the segment exercise at the first, then only you can understand that thing. So segmentation has to be done if you do the recommendation, if you want to do the recommendation engine. And then we do the hybrid recommendation. We mix and match uh, both the content-based and the collaborative filtering, and then we create a recommendation. There are different methods, not going into detail, but that's how it goes. Last part is about the purchase likelihood algorithm of, uh, of this uh, customer analytics or the, or the customer acquisition analytics is that whatever I'm recommending, whatever the products I'm recommending, what is the probability of purchase? So we precisely figured out that thing by doing the propensity model and uplift model. It is very simple uh, that what is the probability of conversion? So converted, not converted is the kind of dependent variable we have, uh, the binary say? dependent variable. Sorry? Thanks. Okay. Next, we are moving to the financial analytics part. Financial analytics, uh, we will precisely work on one part is about the credit risk modeling. Again, when we, I'm sure you also do the credit risk modeling in your classes, uh, but perhaps one thing that doesn't get covered is the post loan disbursement part. 
So uh, both the things gets covered. One is the pre-loan, second one is the post-loan. So don't okay. think that once the customer is given the loan, no analytics is required. It happens very frequently that the first few months the customer pays the loan on time, but then after the six months are over, then the delinquency rates uh, increases. So how to discuss the borrower is a critical question. That means in the pre-loan disbursement part, who should get the loan, how much loan they should receive, and what should be the interest rate. The risk here, the borrower, the higher interest rate. That's how things go. <laughs> So for that purpose, we come out with an application scorecard here. And these are the kind of variables we consider, the demographic variables, the existing relationship with the banks or the NBFC, and the credit bureau variables. And this is the analytics framework again. Uh, these are the different kind of machine learning models we do. Again, uh, to give the loan or to disburse the loan or not to disburse the loan, that's the question here. Uh, these are the tests for model development. These are the tests for the model performance. And finally, this is the beauty. Uh, whatever the modeling techniques you do, that doesn't matter to a business guy. You have to give, uh, suppose a business guy means who are the business guys here. These are all the direct selling agents uh, who are uh, who are uh, in the field for the throughout the day, meeting number of customers. They need not work on your models uh, per se, in the sense that they need not run the model and get an answer, nothing like that. So you have to give a kind of very user-friendly interface to them user-friendly interface in the sense there should be a kind of in the tab, the application will be there, the app will be there. In the app, they will simply uh, put the variables and then automatically the app will tell you whether the customer is a good customer or not, whether we can proceed with the loan disbursement or not. So uh, that's the kind of um, uh, that's the kind of easy to use framework, easy to use interface you have to give to the business guys. That's the kind of very important thing because only model will not help unless you keep a kind of interface with the business. And then comes the post-loan disbursement part. But before going there, let me tell you also another thing. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, we have come, uh, we have actually augmented it, which I'm going to discuss elaborately in the fraud analytics part. So along with AI, we also use the RPA or the robotic process automation. So not that, uh, not that the DSA needs to punch in, physically punch in, physically type each of these figures. This gets, suppose, the monthly salary range. The moment, uh, the moment, uh, uh, potential, uh, potential, uh, potential seeker of the loan uh, shares the shares the credit card statement, shares the bank loan statement. Automatically, those uh, those numbers gets captured in the system. So, robotic process automation works there, and that gets captured in the system, and then the, then that gets kind of input for the for the app to take a decision whether to give the loan or not. So even uh, we get rid of the DSA to punch in or figure or, or just typing the numbers that is also not required. Next comes the post loan disbursement part. The key business question is that how many late payments we expect a loan to have after a certain period. So typically predict time to default for the individual segment of the customers like what is the whether the customer is going to default after a certain time or not after six months after eight months after nine months is the customer there's a probability the customer is going to default so that's one part of the thing the other 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 probabilities we figured out is that whether uh, whether the what is the kind of late uh, number of days uh, the customer is going to default so not only after but is the person person going to default by 30 days 45 days 60 days what is the number of days and the third part is about the whether we can sell any new loan to the customer or not so that's the decision story. So for the behavior scorecard, this is the first one we call this application scorecard and the second one, the post loan, we call it the behavior scorecard. So whether the existing customer will default in loan payment or not, say for the six to 18 months, for example. So that's the kind of uh, work we do. And uh, obviously the input variables for these models are very different uh, from the input model of the pre-loan disbursement because we have got a lot of, you know, lot of data about the customer once uh, the customer starts transacting with the bank like the debt to income ratio a number of borrowers inquiries interest rate of the loan credit score and this is how you know again again these things also there is always an user interface that's a very important part uh, model model cannot be worked without a user interface so this is a kind of typical web app through which we can figure out that yes with the months and with the change in the expected uh, with the change of the credit score how the expected number of late payments change you can see here how with the Credit score eight, it is reasonably good. Expected number of payments are reasonably good, but if the credit score falls to four, how uh, that expected number of late payments increases. So that's kind of it is not only about the credit score. So a lot of other variables come, and the typical web app or a dashboard will tell you that how the customer behaves. So that's precisely the precisely the financial analytics part. I'm sure I'm very much on time. And then the third part is about fraud analytics, where I shall 
where I shall focus primarily on the application fraud. What is the application fraud? Application fraud means that whenever a customer, uh, say for example, let's take the same example of a loan. Whenever a customer wants to take a loan, uh, customer gives uh, customers, uh, there are many customers give many false documents uh, starting, from the, starting from the bank loan, credit card, and, uh, and even the ID cards for that matter, even the images for that matter. Everything customers try to get a bigger loan and then a lot of falsification takes place at that stage. Falsification for takes at multiple stages, but I actually cover only the application part here. Now, the first thing that I was discussing with you is how to apply the robotic process information here. Now, we extract the data from the scan images, PDF files, what documents, whatever the customers, you know, give. Even, even we can also figure out that whether the PDF document, uh, what the customer is sharing, is that a kind of tampered word or not? Is that been really been converted uh, from the word or it has been tampered somewhere? So these things can be done by several logics, business logics are there. And there are several mechanisms also. So uh, we ex the APIs are there that extract information from the images of the iCard. So put the iCard, uh, uh, Aadhaar, or any kind of driving license, PAN, passport, whatever the customer is submitting. The API is there that extract information uh, through the OCR is there, which will uh, extract information from the salary statements, like salary credit, how much salary gets credited, what are the point of sales debits, the EMI debits. So, uh, and all those things gets, you know, converted to a dashboard and then the profile gets created. So that's the first step where RPA takes a major role. So uh, not not any manual intervention is required. Whenever a customer submits the documents, it gets checked in an automated way, uh, checks for the, any kind of fraud in an automated way, and then that gets converted to a dashboard in an automated way. That's the application of RPA. Uh, then comes the then comes the scanning of the images and the PDF documents. So here also you know a lot of logic we check uh, because. Uh, Every ID card, every ID card that the customer submits, every ID card, whenever they get prepared uh, from the government side, they apply a few logic. Like what should be the what should be the PAN number, for example. Uh, the, the first few digits of PAN number, if a customer is born between some years, say if the customer is born between 1980 to 85, for example, uh, then the PAN should start with A, like that. So if such things don't match, uh, we uh, we the business logic actually catch it very very quickly. Uh, uh, even for the images, we do those things like, you know, what sharing or the tampering of the images, we can figure out by the analyzing the pixel of the images, what are the geometric alignment of the images, what are the object interactions, object interaction in the sense, uh, suppose some information should be there in the footer. So we know how, what does this mean? So we actually work with the logic and see that whether this logic actually aligns with the other information or not. And that's exactly what I was discussing, building a fraud scorecard for the customer. So uh, we know that uh, what 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 are the kind of business logic that goes but I cannot the business logic is actually the documentation logic from the government side that goes while they create this kind of uh, i card so uh, that gets checked that gets checked in an automated way that's the beauty not that i have to do it or anybody has to do it we create a data pipeline so the data comes uh, data gets extracted by ocr at rpa it comes to the database the logic are the algorithms are there, the algorithms work on the data and automatically it creates the kind of fraud scorecard and finally, the image analytics part or the AI part. So what happens is that nowadays it becomes mandatory for most of the most of the governments of the countries. Uh, like they have to, customer has to not only submit the submit the I cards but also take a selfie from the app. Now we also we also check whether the selfie is the same person who has been given in the I card or not. So it's a kind of image comparison. The image that I'm getting in the I card and the image that the person is uh, uh, sharing as a selfie with the same person or not. Or it's a kind of picture of a picture or not. So that way, a uh, lot of uh, lot of uh, image analytics algorithms or computer vision algorithms you must be knowing, like convolutional neural network. Then there are RCNN, fast RCNN, faster RCNN. These are all the different kind of uh, image analytics algorithms that go into the place and uh, figure out whether the images are the same person or not. So that's the one way of doing the or applying the artificial intelligence and robotic process automation in the fraud analytics part. So thank you, and uh, it's open for questions. Uh, just uh, just before I close, uh, I, I was giving some kind of hyperlinks there. So I was giving a kind of example that how the hybrid models take place when I'm actually mixing the deep neural network and RNN for chart analytics. So that's how the deep neural network. This is how the LSTM or the recurrent neural network, LSTM or long short term memory is a part of recurrent neural network. So how these two things actually get merged and we get the deep neural network. So that's how the hybrid model works. The second part is about, uh, this is in context of the customer lifetime value. When I was discussing about the stacked LSTM or the stacked long short term memory. So when I shared the stack, I have shown you the pictures of how the different slabs of the bricks were there. 
So this is how actually the models work. So uh, these are the different LSTM. This is how the bi-directional you can see how the bi-directional things works here. And then finally it comes to one single LSTM and all these LSTMs actually come to the final prediction. So that's our robust framework. This is a robust framework how it works. It is not about a kind of single model and then single model uh, predicts something. You won't get any accuracy. Uh, accuracy will be very poor with the real time data if you just bank on or if you just rely on one model. And uh, this is about the uh, recommendation engine. We typically use the ReLU model here. Uh, so whatever I told you about the collaborative filtering and the content-based filtering, uh, I haven't discussed the algorithms here. This is the different kind of algorithms that gets worked here. So thank you. That's from my side. Uh, any questions, I shall be glad to answer them. Hello. Hello. Hello, uh, can you hear me? Yes, now you are audible. Any Hello. questions? Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, uh, Dr. Tuhin, I'm Professor Rajneesh Kumar Mishra. I'm teaching human resource management and HR analytics to the students. Just a very basic very and simple question. Yeah. Uh, see, when you, uh, you have your clients with bands, yeah. so uh, whenever you are uh, trying to do uh, the data pattern and algorithm and preparing an algorithm, uh, mm -hmm. a you have to look at their database that is already existing. Correct. And for the maybe maybe no data. So right. in that case, how would you d develop an algorithm and uh, try to find out the data pattern so that you can come to some conclusion? The question is not clear. As I rightly asked you to understand your question, you were saying uh, that see, when yeah. I said correct, it means that you were saying that I'm looking at the customer's database. That's correct. You're also saying I am looking at the new customers, new data. That's also mm -hmm. correct. But then what kind of algorithms I shall use to generate insight? What does that mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, uh, so uh, maybe some of the fields may not be available in the database for okay. which uh, the, you may require you? Uh, to, uh, you? Yeah. to have question it is not clear. Data to take the, the analysis forward. Okay, got you. So, so typically, you know, uh, traditionally what was been used, there yeah. are some rule of thumbs, but those things are actually out of the window. The traditional uh, rule of thumb Am I am I audible? See, uh, there, I hope there, I am. Yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Okay, sure. So traditional rule of thumb is that if the missing value is more than thirty percent, uh, don't take it, or improve the missing values with the okay. mean, median, mode. Okay. Uh, those things are not very, you know, okay, not very okay. handy, not very advisable. That's these are not advisable. I'm not advising that. By the yeah, way, true. don't say yeah. okay. I'm not advising that. What I'm advising is mm -hmm. that for such kind of work, for such kind of mm -hmm. scenarios. You have to develop the models for the missing values. What do I mean by the models for missing value? Uh, let me give you a very simple example. Very simple example that everybody can understand. Say, for example, you are doing with only two variables, sales and price. Now, uh, some sales value are missing. Not, but, and you are supposed to impute the missing value. Are you going to do it by mean, median, mode? No way. So what you can do is that from the existing uh, data, that no. means sales and price no. data, you can create an equation. And then say, for example, you have got Y equals to sales, sales okay. equals to some, some, some kind of M that is the coefficient into price plus C. You have got the equation. Now you have got the missing value of sales, but you have got the price, for example, it can be other way around also, but you have a kind of equation. Okay. So what you okay. can do is that from the okay. price, you can straight away predict. Now I have given an equation of equation okay. of regression so that it's understood by everyone. But regression is typically not being used uh, because that's not a sign of very, very sophisticated method. Uh, typically for such kind of scenarios, the nearest neighbor models, uh, typically the Bayesian models are most uh, most reliable in the sense of they work with the probability, conditional probability more accurately. Uh, so uh, the Bayesian networks, the Bayesian models, uh, Markov models, and the lookalike models uh, are the best scenario to work on such scenarios. Okay. But uh, the, the takeaway from my discussion is that it, it has to be okay. imputed great, to some model. Thank you. Oh, yeah. good. Okay, good, good. Thank you. 
No pleasure. Any other question? Any other question, please? Students, if you'd like to ask some questions. Okay, Tuhin, I have a yeah. question. Doctor, uh, yeah. I, yes, please, please. Who is that? Please carry on with your question first. Yeah. This is Dr. Tuhin. Good morning, Dr. Tuhin. This is Dr. Ravi Shuma. Your voice is breaking. Anyway, go ahead. Am I audible? Am I audible now? Not really. I'm having a hard time. Anyway, go ahead. I shall try to decode. Okay. So I want to ask a question on behalf of my friends in case if they want to go for business analytic course, then what are prerequisite that they should have? Who should well, uh, to be very honest, do well in business? What are the prerequisites? I won't. I won't. I won't like to answer this question uh, from the from the from the perspective of what subjects they should know, because that has been uh, you know dried, dried and dusted in the sense that everybody knows like you know, they need to understand statistics, mathematics, but those things are not required to me. What is really required is the ability of critical thinking. If one can really think critically, uh, analytically, the power of thinking is the most important thing. If one is having that thing, uh, no other statistics, machine learning is required. If it is not there, whatsoever amount of coding skills, machine learning skills, statistical skills you are having, but if one cannot think clearly, uh, then a person cannot excel. As simple as that. That's a very, very interesting observation, Dr. Rahul. Uh, the students can be guided like this, that you don't essentially have to have any basic prerequisites, mathematical ability or exceptional mathematical ability, quantitative analytic ability, basically creative, strategic thinking, solution-oriented thinking is what is really required. Am I right, Tareen? This is what you meant? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I assume that the assumption of this statement is that the, the student has the capability or the talent to pick up the mathematical and the coding skills. Of course, if Correct. the assumption gets violated, then this my statement is not true. That means if the person cannot pick up the mathematical skills or the coding skills at a later stage, then no amount of critical thinking the person is having it will not help. But uh, only having the mathematical or coding skills, uh, that is a kind of necessary but not sufficient condition. Good, good, good. Uh, anyone else? Hello. You have, a, you have a question, I think. Hello. Yeah, you're audible. Please go ahead. Yeah, actually, I do have a question. Like, we have learned about business analytics in our post graduation, and I'm undergoing through data analytics as machine learning and AM loops and dev loops so i just want to know like how is artificial intelligence linked to it and what are the software that we can use and learn okay. to go into okay. that process okay good question it's actually a good question thank you so much uh see for for us who are into this field for uh for for decades to be very honest uh in our time there was nothing called you know ai algorithms now I shall quickly uh, you know, walk you through the history of the development and you will understand why I'm devoting this two minutes of time. So uh, uh, in our marketing research time, it was the neural network. You must be acquainted about the different neural network algorithms like multilayer perceptron, radial basis functions. We had those neural networks uh, with uh, maximum five hidden fields, not more than that. One to five was kind of max, the hidden layers were there. Uh, but then, but then uh, in the recent last uh, five to 10 years, the the nature of the business problem changed like computer vision the image analytics the speech mining speech mining is not text mining i'm talking about the intonation of the speech uh, what is the sentiment from the speech uh, not way by the word but by the intonation only so for that purpose we require a very granular level of analysis pixel by pixel analysis of an image now for that purpose we require you know five hidden layers were insufficient hidden layers nowadays we work is about uh, 100 to 300 sometimes even 500 and 1000 now, now you can understand how is the kind of history or the development or the evolution of the how it is linked. That was your question. I'm answering that question. It is linked in the sense that it is an augmentation. It is not a kind of new invention. It's an augmentation of the existing machine learning techniques of the neural network techniques. Now you have got all the deep learning functions. Deep means what the number of hidden layers increases and the architecture also increases. 